some cat took a huge shit in the cat box. Oh my god. Hey, our dishwasher is broken. So we have a new motor and pump. I guess uh, a while back, a couple of us broke some cups. And a little piece of shards went down into the pump and uh, shredded it. So it sounds like a freaking uh, jet engine from... Hey, uh, he can hear it in the other rooms. This is, it's like, yeah, it's done. Hoping we don't get any rain. It's supposed to get up to 70 degrees today. We are doing front brakes. And specifically, we're going to take off the rotors. And uh, we're going to see if we can get them turned. What's nice about having independent axle suspension or or even a solid axle for that matter this makes it great for jacking the truck up I just jack it up right here with the jack in a block of wood throw on the jack same thing on this side and then I just take the jack and kind of support the center just so the load is evenly distributed so we are on axles I got the e-brake on the e-brake works pretty damn good now I remember the little lever used to stick, or the little ratchet would stick and it wouldn't, uh, it would never uh, catch, so now it's kind of freed itself because we've been using it, so it works. That's a little, a little sticky, I bet you if I fix this, I can make this, I uh, think it better, better gas mileage, I think it's getting like 12 or 13 right now, I don't know what it's getting, whatever it used to get when I had it. Adam used to drive it slow. <laughs> and then this side that has the lettering worn off because Adam kept running into the curb. It's still a little tight, but not bad. I also wanted to I also wanted to see if there was any play in any of the suspension. <laughs> oh yeah, for those of you who are new, I do have a steering stabilizer on this. Really see any movement I think I'm just gonna replace these boots on here and I am gonna free these uh, drag links up drag links up so that it'll be easy for the guys to align this damn thing when I go to get it aligned because as you can see this is kind of being chewed away a little funky I think the toe is off otherwise I think the camber is just right Now looking at these, they're really not that bad. They're they just need to be turned. There's not a whole lot of wear on them. There's not even a lip right here. So, but yeah, they're still stuck. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the huge ass calipers off, and I'm gonna scotch bright all the mounting surfaces really fucking good, and then we'll get some. Uh, and he sees in there and so that it'll move around a little bit better. This is kind of the old shittier Ford design that where they didn't have uh, slider pins that just moves on tight tolerances. I don't know. It's just kind of stupid. But basically to get it off you have a bolt here and it allows you to hammer out this little uh, uh, holder, hold down or whatever you want to call it. And then basically this just pops up. And I have a bungee cord here where I can Tie this up somewhere, like probably on the coil spring or something. So that's what we're gonna do. And if anybody is looking for new shocks for their truck, get Gabriel Ultras. They're like 25 bucks a piece at AutoZone. They're really nice, they ride great. So here are my current brake pads. These are some Duralast ones. I actually need to get the anti-rattle clip pins. I just fell out and I didn't know where they went, so. I'm gonna figure out where they go and get them in. So, but these really aren't that bad. These are pretty damn good so far.
I don't mind these Duralas pads too much. Those have been in there for a while, almost a year, I think. But once I got them off, check that out. So if we can free this up a little bit, then we can get some better gas mileage and less wear on the brakes. But listen to the bearing doesn't sound too good in there. So here's our bearing. This one here is not too bad. There's no pitting or anything, and it's got pretty normal wear. So I think I'm just gonna clean them up, throw a new grease on them, and I might buy a new wheel seal or a uh, seal for this. It's a little wet. I might throw in some bearings. If the bearings are cheap, I might as well just replace them. But uh, now the races don't look bad. They're not pitted up or anything. So I'm gonna just clean this off really good. So. I'm gonna go take these and see if they can get them turned. Okay, so I got break, both brake rotors off. One thing I noticed with this side is it was hand tight on the nut. This side here, this would be the driver's side, that's where it came from. It uh, was a little bit tighter, it was uh, like channel lock tight, like I just got the channel locks and just kind of broke it free. So this side was a little bit tighter. So, I think I'll put it on a little bit snug kind of like it was before and I'll do the same thing for this other side but uh, I'm gonna go see if I can get these turned um, even if I can't I'm still gonna get uh, new wheel bearings they're like three bucks a piece or for a pack so I'll get new wheel bearings and new seals you might as well because this side was getting like it was starting to leak a little bit of grease out and we'll get some bearing grease and get her get her tidied up here at least we'll have new wheel bearings um, so far, the, I checked the races on these. They're not worn down too terribly. And they're not pitted, so I think they're still pretty good. So I'll just get new bearings. These bearings here were looking a little nasty, so... Plus the grease is kind of nasty, too. Like, I had some dirt in it. Oh, crap. What could this possibly be? Well... Going to a few owners back that previously had this truck, probably the people who put the motor in. They did some stuff with the uh, trailer wiring. I'll show you here. I could definitely tell this is not a Ford job. <laughs> so under here you have the spaghetti mess of shit, and they have this one particular power wire. You can already tell what happened. So, whoever wired this in left this one joint kind of, you know, not so covered up. So what happened was yesterday when I put my truck back together and set it on the ground really hard, these wires pulled back and this one made contact with the frame. This is going straight from the battery right to here. It's not even fucking fused. So this wire here all the way along the frame nearly caught on fire I'm gonna show you I mean you know the truck still runs and drives it just fine nothing on the truck was impacted except for the trailer wiring yeah so the wire comes up and around all this shit, you know, it's by some, not really by any fuel lines, all my fuel lines are right over here. All right, it comes up over here, completely melted my HVAC line, melted into the air box a little bit, didn't really poke any holes. As far as I'm concerned, my radio still works, transmission still shifts. You know what, I might not have to replace this. I thought that canister was bad, but it was actually just... I I could probably snip that off and... Reattach it. I mean, it, it closed it off. <laughs> so, yeah, this power wire... 
came up here. I mean, it was just completely like sizzling and shit. But uh, luckily, I had a fire extinguisher nearby, so I just went and just. It wasn't really on fire, I just blasted it anyways. Because I didn't want it to start on fire, I had to disconnect the battery. And once I did that, it stopped sizzling. But uh, yeah, it scared the absolute shit out of me. And uh, as for the video earlier, I didn't get to show you the finish up of the uh, wheels and stuff. We ended up not being able to turn the rotors because at the last second they decided, oh, they're, they're out of spec. And, uh, and even if I could turn them, I don't have my adapter. So I'm like, you know what? I can't be cheap. I, I just can't. I tried turning my drums. No. I mean, these things have barely a lip on them and, and you know, can't even fucking turn them. Unlike, you know, the guy across the street, his brakes are freaking, have probably like a one or two millimeter lip on his rotors and he can probably go get them turned. That's some bullshit. But anyways, we have new bearings. Um, I think I showed you guys this side was a little clickety, so uh, the braces were good in the dr in the rotors, so I ended up just putting new uh, bearings in and, and stuff and a whole bunch of new wheel bearing grease in. Nice fresh red and tacky stuff. So, at least they're rolling pretty good. The one side, I snugged them both down and got the uh, the uh, preload just right. So I just put them on snug. I didn't do them tight or anything. I ended up timing this. But I had, my cousin had a timing light. So I threw it on here and um, ended up turning this a little bit. Uh, the vacuum going that way towards the thermostat. And I got the timing mark square. It was a little off so I redid it and now it's, uh, it's working pretty good. It run runs a little bit smoother actually. So now if I could just figure out why the choke does not come on automatically. I mean it's hooked up right. It goes to the SDA port on the alternator. And the choke uh, portion is brand new. Um, I don't know if, if there's a rod or something in the choke back here that's bent. And it's not triggering, triggering this little cam or something or what. I don't know what's going on there, but I know the truck worked on the other carburetor. Um, but for right now, what I ended up what I end up doing is I pull back on the throttle and look for that little rod, and I push it all the way up as far as it'll go. Backs up just fine. got about half the tank. I think I've all taken damn it. I think I've all taken to work. So I'm gonna fix those two things up. So. Put my choke back because I'm not gonna leave for another couple hours. Damn it. Well anyways, that's it for this video. See you guys in a week.